Yeah, dude. I'm streaming right now, and we got uh, a bunch of fellas in the chat. who are uh, hanging out with us. Let's see. We got... Uh, oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> Uh, we got J15, we got Kit Kat Katie, we got Headsman, Nova, uh, Jedi, Zebra, anyway. Ah! Oh, there he is. Well, there you go. Thank you for the follow, man. I've, it's rare that I get to, uh, personally thank a follower, you know? Oh, God. That was not... Sorry for how scuffed it's. I don't know if the follower mode for six days or a week to chat is the best idea. Would <laughs> I have a follower mode on? Yeah, apparently. Yeah, I think J15 must have done that. J15, can you please fix the follower mode? No, don't enable it. Thank you. You disabled it. Okay. Can you send a message in there? There he goes. All right, dude. So let's let's get into the you know nitty gritty. Um, so, I mean, I'm just interested. Is it easier in... for me to just watch you through? Maybe if you just watch. Life. Yeah. Since it kind of sucks, I'm sorry that I can't do both at the same time. I'm um, good. Anyway, so just real basic questions. Um, nothing too high pressure. Just answer what you want. I just want to, you know, get to know you guys, and so does so does the chat. So. Whatever you're comfortable with sharing, just tell me about yourself, what you do. Um, me, huh? <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, I'll tell you about myself first if that makes it any, you know, easier. Yeah. All right, well, so, I mean, topics to start with, sure. Yeah, so me, I uh, graduated uh, last year, or this year, rather, in May. Um, and now I'm working a full-time job in Indianapolis and, you know, just chilling. I guess. Been there, great city. Life. Really politic oh, really? political. Political. Very when political. I say political. Yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah, Indianapolis is old. They've got a good naval base. Um what'd you graduate with? So I graduated with an international economics degree. Um so it sounds a lot more intimidating. Numbers, than, huh? Yeah. So numbers and interesting uh, figures and models and stuff like that. But, Currently, uh, I'm working on a graphic design degree at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. Uh, I have class two or stage two schizophrenia, um, wow. paranoia to be specific. And it actually just about 20 minutes ago landed me in a cop car I and they Trump. drove me home. Aga. So Aga. I don't know, I'm a little frazzled. Uh, oh, wow. There's a lot I could share. But my life, like I said earlier before we, I, I mean, I guess the podcast had already started, but in either case, a little hectic. Well, dude, I'm sorry if it was a bad time. Um, no, not really. We can, we can talk about anything. Okay. I mean, as far as what you guys know about me, I love tech. Uh, I love the internet. I love dude, me too. mostly everything that Twitch provides, but but mainly like my own website's a huge thing for me. Uh, programming's a huge thing for me. Dude, Video I've games are a huge out, thing for me. Yeah, I've checked out your website before and... <laughs> Once I went to it and it says downloading your IP. <laughs> yeah, it's not something most websites tell you, but I mean, if you have an engine to run it through the actual web program itself, it's nice to tell people, but uh, most servers in general, like you could just log on to the GoDaddy server that you're paying for and see everybody who's logged on. Yeah, you know what I mean? They, they tell you terrifying. anyway. It's <laughs> yeah. just, you know. It's interesting. Yeah, I, mine mine just actually has an actual web IP tracker built into it to do eight jumps, even if you're using a VPN. So I find you. Okay. It's just, you know, um, <laughs> it, even if it tells me it's a dislocated six jump or something, like I, I get to a point where, you know, it's directed to at least out of the country, etc. I honestly don't know that much about all that stuff, to be honest. I, uh, I don't even use a VPN much for anything besides work, but... Um, yeah, that's, that's awesome. So you said you love tech and programming and all that stuff and you have a background in that. Um, you know, I've checked out some of your work, some of your designs, videos, that sorts of stuff. Um, but I'm just curious, like, so w where did you get your name from? Why did you decide to go with no tech for you if you love tech so much? Is it just Is like, it, a, isn't that kind of an obvious like answer? Like, like it, it's not for me, bro. It's not for you? 
I don't I don't understand. No, it's not for you. Oh, it's not for me. It's all for you. Okay, I think I get it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> all right. Anyway, um, you know, Noisy Nazi from uh, J- John Belushi, forever ago, SNL. No, okay. To yeah. Big jump. Yeah. Ah, I see. Before your time. That's all right. Yeah. No. 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 Tampax gets it, and so does Katie. <laughs> and so does Katie. So I'm sorry, but um, anyway, so I want to ask you about Twitch. Um, so what? You know, obviously you love tech and everything, so it's kind of obvious how you would have discovered Twitch and all that stuff, but I'm wondering, like, how you discovered the platform and how long you've, you know, been a I've fan. been here since week one. Oh, really? Week I one, was here so... since this was JTV. Justin TV. Wow, he's an OG. Yeah. Oh, that's sick. Um, um, YouTube. YouTube started for me. I started becoming a YouTuber a long time ago under the name No Tech For You. Did some Minecraft videos. Never went anywhere. Some bigger people saw it, and at that point, even APL seeing some of my videos and then being oh, wow. a person that's just like, I've seen your videos, dude, like, is funny to me in all of the right circumstances, so I, I get a kick out of it. But um, besides that, I'd rather be an online entity that doesn't cast himself as, like, a singer, s- single soul, single soul uh, uh, face to, to constantly belligerate you know sure. what, what what happens around the internet like yeah. it becomes this thing where i'd rather add to things and comment you know like yeah. be that side comment rather than be the guy trying to direct people's minds and decisions yeah that makes like, sense if anything i'm here to derive you off of somebody's this is the only path to go solution okay. yeah that makes sense constantly arguing devil's advocate okay sense. yeah no i mean i feel like there's a lot of those kinds of people though on <laughs> on the internet so i don't think there are any, any well yeah any... but i mean how, how often does somebody you know that that argu- argues devil's advocate to be a troll actually take upon the opposite stance just to say how oppositional the exact opposite is in the stance of hey can we come to a solution that's somehow exactly in the middle that solves everything for everybody and, and i mean isn't that what politics comes to the most as far as having referendums on a bill that passes so that the other team can kind of work it into the system how they had you know designed to invent something to cohere to the most people everywhere sure. even a voting system right yeah so like even if that one person lies as far left as possible or as far right as possible you're voting on them because they also align with your beliefs and some mediating way that life will be okay for the next four years you know yeah. if i'm an independent that's me so are you would you would you call yourself an independent or very 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 hopefully if okay. anything i lean towards is libertarian but okay. uh i hate to throw that out because i think there's such a polar stance that i'd also call them a third point to a triangle in the political system these days uh, there's just not a base for them. And in any case, like if you're calling that to be a socioeconomic stance, I'd rather have my my middle term idea be the stance between all four of those points, like the, the, the tip of the pyramid, if you will. And uh, middle line idea, like why not make a party or, or even decide to subside to ideas that have everything in mind down to should we go this power source uh coal should we go wind uh maybe we shouldn't go either and create something that is nuclear or even uh uh rather than solar go go detrimental of some other grade of particle like a cleaner hydrogen fueled you know what i mean like like people don't even subside to starting new ideas they don't it it becomes this thing where we try to take upon things that are old and then build them into a new idea and constantly renovate yeah so i mean i think that's true for a lot of people a lot of people have the thought that you know there's there's no such thing as like a new idea there's you know and i kind of have to choose a side 85 percent of the design world as i've heard in school so many times is recycled yeah or remixed yeah but you know those people that do reinvent or not reinvent but you know come out with new things those are the people that are going to actually have some sort of an impact i think at least i mean you'd say it's new things it's usually such an original derivative off of an idea that yeah. you call it a new ip or a new intellectual property because it's made a jump into a new puddle That's but true. but it's based or remixed off of something even then you know what i mean like yeah. you you have to redefine a new word you have to add a word to the dictionary to invent something that hasn't been there before and and even then you're 
starting something with the dictionary that goes to, hey, this word aligns with other words that already exist, and this yeah. is how we define it. So, so uh, jumping to that idea, the other thing that comes to mind is um, remix. But then, oh, my aunt always reminds me as being a doctor that rather than going in and solving the symptoms, you should find the source and solve the problem at the source. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot because, of sense. I mean, even if you're going through hell, symptomatic solutions are, are nothing more than keeping the problem at bay. Sure, yeah, temporary solutions, which are in, mo in most cases a lot easier to seek out and to you know, apply. But if you do go to the source, that's obviously where you're gonna fix the deep-rooted problem. So you're right on that. Definitely. Um, okay, so you know, I, I've looked at a lot of your design on your website and I have checked out your YouTube channel and stuff and like you said you go way back there's a lot of stuff on there um so i guess how long have you been using like photoshop and um i guess just the adobe crazy since i was 12. since you were 12 okay so that's that's pretty crazy how did you end up getting into that you Fuck just... Luke's though. bought a netbook as a 12 year old um it was linux it was the first linux computer ever sold uh it was an epc and uh, it had the EPCOS on it, which you could then mod into having a full Linux distro with a taskbar and etc. And even Windows that showed up rather than full screening everything, etc. etc. It all went from there. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I was forced to mod Linux into full Linux as my first operating system. And so I was just like, this is what computers do? Yeah. And from there on, I've been modifying Windows. To, I wish I could show you my screen right now. Like, oh, really? You've seen my, you've seen my Twitter. Yeah. Every single one of my windows looks like a green box with, with, I mean, might as well be 95 that somebody had modded, you know? That's pretty cool. I, I honestly don't have that much experience and know how to even begin to comprehend how that you would even do that. You so. can open theme files in Notepad. Okay. And then it's all just numbers from there in uh, RGB format. So up to 255 for white, uh, zero for black, uh, RGB. Makes, makes sense. So uh, I guess going off of like coding and stuff like that, um, what are like your favorite languages to code in? What What's your favorite? Um, Java. Java. What's your favorite like IDEs, text editors, that sort of thing? Jet Builder, um, JB. Um, WebStorm made by JetBrains from cool. JetBrains. Yeah, definitely so... by far my favorite so far. Uh, otherwise, I might have to go to JEdit, which is even smaller and slimmer and more diverse, but doesn't do as well at decompiling, recompiling, or telling you what errors are. Okay, that's cool. Um... Hmm, I'm trying to think of some other things. I've got like some questions from fans slash Twitch chat members. Ask away. So um, I guess we're always interested to see, and especially me, I'm always interested. You're probably one of my favorite uh, chatters in Hutch's chat just because of Thanks. maybe sort of that devil's advocate sort of thing we were talking about earlier. and. Oh, just... and, and or pushing an idea so far that it's... it's uh suicide and cyanide you know what i mean yeah just like total extremes in a chat room that's honestly 90 percent of the time kind of uh you know stick it you know it sticks to kind of the the norm sometimes i like to argue devil advocate at hutch and if you haven't noticed like he, he spits back at me with like jake what are you talking or no tech what are you talking about tonight i'm sorry i always hear my name whenever no tech said but uh <laughs> it's okay uh like like Huh? and then goes to ask why I think that and then you know I'm just there to open up the idea that like what if Trump hadn't thought through what he was doing you know what I mean yeah. Hutch yeah I think I think those ideas are especially important uh, in Hutch's stream so I appreciate that um, so the whenever... well, biggest thing I'm gonna add to the political idea for now and I'm just gonna leave it at that because I'm not a very political person I prefer to live my life around it besides it sure um, uh, Trump, as a person, whether or not he thinks through what he's doing, does the presidency, as in acting as someone that's so far above everyone else, even in, in 
crime and decision making for people that die on other ends of the world yeah does it in a way that diminishes what our presidency should be and that's the reason right yeah and i think it sets a precedent for the future of presidents as well oh yeah he's he's broken the barriers like there's there's no doubt like there's no set of transparency that's going to work as well because he's accidentally been a transparent idiot pretty much and you know global embarrassment for the for our country but anyway so i guess you know staying a little bit on the political train um which candidates do you kind of align your like which candidates with their values align the most closely with your own values and are your favorites uh so far hmm uh transparency is awesome i'm glad that it happened accidentally uh power is a huge issue we're like having more people and the first problem that we're going to come into is how much power we're making how it definitely needs to become some way sustainable sure. number two fossil fuels are getting cheaper but that's not for the reason people think so like we need electric cars faster than anything uh um so trains i don't understand why we don't have bullet trains in the united I, I, states i, I like wish every we did, one of but... our trains tops out at about 70 miles an hour which makes no sense like how does every single other country first world or other have bullet trains and they're getting their shipments so much faster because of it in america what has bad tracks so what we can't upgrade tracks to bullet train tracks like come on we don't care about Uh, infrastructure we don't put the you know that's not where the money goes political ideas like people throw out political ideas as as far as like what is your opinion and stance on and i'm sorry but like if you just start throwing out ideas like what is your political stance on should this be okay it's just whether or not it should be okay and if you're talking about individualistic opinions that are never gonna go away that constantly propagate out of a new person being born you know what i mean like you're not gonna do away with it so what do you have to do regulate and legalize it it's not a matter of whether it needs to be legalized or illegalized like you're trying to illegalize what drugs because they make bad things are they gonna go away you think any drug that's ever been discovered is going away. No, needs to be legalized and regulated. You think yeah. any sexuality is going away? No, we know since Sodom and Gomorrah, anything and everything is ever possible. Do we know that uh, uh, transportation as a mass instance for death is going away? No. Do we have to do something better about it because it still is higher than alcohol in far as instances and accidents? Yes. Is alcohol a propagating thing that does that? Yes. Would alcohol then become less of an instance for whether or not that's a reason for death if other drugs are legalized? I'd think so. Like we could go around this all day. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, totally. I um I actually wrote my senior thesis on um, Portugal. So back in 2002, they decriminalized mm-hmm. all you know substances, yes. and um, the data that they f- they, they really failed and effed up there because they did not collect very good data in terms of drug drug consumption or anything really. Mm. But what I did find with kind of my, um, you know, flawed data was that um, alcohol consumption actually ended up going up. So the two were actually co- acting as complements. So that, you know, poses an, if that's actually true, that poses Being an interesting... Being the number one consuming alcohol country, that would be terrible. Yeah. But then again, what do you think would happen to the people here? You think they'd just die faster from overdose? Like, uh, if people are really that stupid to be willing to test their bodies to overdose with alcohol that hard, then maybe they aren't the ones we need in society. I that's a that's a hot take. I gotta say, hot take, it's hot definitely... take. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm gonna be completely honest here. The way it regulates itself is only the smartest and strongest survive. Like, it's always a competition pool, but if you want to base it off of a competition pool on who succeeds, if you're calling life success, then only the people who have more life. And the only way that's going to stop being a problem the way it is, is if people start creating legacies stronger than the people that carry on after them, and or the legacy of someone being born isn't limited to how they were born which is still a 21st century idea. Like, like we're not taking into account that clones are eventually going to be a thing very soon, if not completely growing back human bodies to have your own brain put into them. How so, soon like, do you think that's going to be happening? Just 10 years. Easy. 10 Cloning? years? Mm. Really? Wow. Uh, we've cloned goats, we've cloned chickens, we've cloned cats, we've cloned plenty of things full-bodied. The next human being, 10 years. 
That's pretty interesting. I, I, I'm i sure that we could definitely use another J15 in Hunch's chat. I can tell you that right now. Um, I don't know about all that. You're going to have a lot of problems with human cloning. Uh, yeah. I mean, even sterility or virility is yeah. going to be probably one of its biggest problems. And, and depending on that, like you're calling out a complete subsect of people that are going to have a sexuality problem. And I don't mean that lightly. So, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So what I'm saying is like, um, even then, once you get beyond the idea of people then having kids one way or another, you know, probably getting new clones out of the idea, see where the sexuality thing's solved. But even then, uh, we don't have polyistic marriages between groupings of people very often at all, ever. Not that Pretty I know much of. doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, if it does, uh, it ends up leaning towards Mormonism, which is mainly one man with multiple women, which is how it's been done with com most commonly in history. But I think it needs to happen again, like the Mansons and get better without people killing people. Okay. That's, that's another hot take. I would say, I mean, that's just the one thing that's pretty much disavowed people from wanting to do communitism in the first place. So, uh, I mean, as far as that ruining it for plenty of years it's the same as a hitler mustache it'll be funny at some point and then it'll come back yeah i mean there's i think there's like a golden rule for things like that right like x many years before you yeah they, they say there's a good four years to something that hurts like that as a societal yeah uh yeah yeah people did math on it and then they made that one south park out of it but yeah, yeah. so i want to round this out with some chat questions um because you know Mostly because... 25. Jedi. 25. <laughs> he's not talking to you. He's talking to Pampax, I think. <laughs> anyway, so the first question comes from I Shook from Hunch's chat. and uh, Right, I know Shook. Yep, Shook. And uh, he's also a video editor guy. Um, so his question is, do you picture J15 with the fattest penis? Uh... I'd likely give it more girth than I would like, but at okay. the same time, I'm not going to call it size. Okay. I can, I think I kind of have to agree with you on that one. I'm going to be honest. Um, okay. So this second question is from Katie and I think it kind of is answered already, but, um, her question was, do you speak English? <laughs> I don't know why she, uh, sprechen die Deutsch, uh, parlez-vous le français? speak English and almost every programming language there is. That's awesome. So, um, yeah, never mind. I, I don't know what I thought there, but so, uh, third question's from Nova and his question is, have you ever done any hallucinogenic drugs before? Huge question. Oh God. Uh, way I answered it already. Um, I, I, I... hold on. I don't know if that answers it. There you go. There is that an answer, but, Nova? There you go. Air Priprizol. Um, I think my cams are worst. Anyway, so, uh, Air Priprizol is is uh, a regulator. Okay. For for hallucinogenics, and the one thing that I went to the hospital for a while back that gave me paranoia, what they assumed had been DMT. So uh, they started me on Respiral, which is a DMT analog, and it is a regulator for it. Um, now I'm on a Bilfi, which is an LSD analog, uh, a regular for it, a regulator for it. So if anything, yeah, if that doesn't uh, answer. So well, I not... guess I guess kind of a follow up to that, um, and you know you can kind of answer however you want, but uh, the so... ultimate goal in life, other than 42 <laughs> being an ironic number, that also draws out to mean something lewd and calculates out to a number that can statistically basis itself in everything that has to do with sex. Uh, I'd say the ultimate goal in life is to have a legacy beyond anything. So how do you, how do you think you're going to go about creating that legacy? My legacy? Yes. Being as loud as possible with who I am individually, being the best so, individual I can potently be. Okay. So you think having a large impact is like the best way to do that getting the most people to know who you are once okay. you're dead yes okay that makes sense um so i guess one of my uh, other questions the the movie hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy but also because you can a book draw first? it into lots of things i'm pretty sure it was a meme before it was a movie i thought it was a book 
No. Hitchhiker's Guide? Yeah, Hitchhiker's Guide was a book first, okay. but I'm That's pretty sure it was also a meme before it was in the book. Okay. 42 yeah. as being a statistical number that relates to sexuality. I don't know. I it just kind of does. The book, if, you, so. if you ask Google, go ask Google what is the meaning to or what is the meaning to life, the universe, and everything. Go ahead, ask. Go ahead, yeah, go ahead, Jedi, ask. Um, so my question was, how has like your um, your I guess mental condition kind of affected you in life in either a positive or a negative way? Oofta. Uh, negatively. It strung me in a hospital three times, wiped me out of school three different semesters, drawn W's on all of those classes. Uh, it's drawn up a huge fucking bill. It's made me resent society for giving me a mental illness. It's mm. made me mad at the people who say any one of my trigger words under the subset of having paranoia. Every time people are around me that start talking in a negative sort of tone, it makes me influx everything they say into my own life as if they're talking about me personally. Like, I can't say it's anything more than a curse. The one blessing it has given me is money from the government and a reason. That's fair enough. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I just certainly can imagine how tough that would be. So, um, yeah. Um, I'm not gonna, <laughs> after, after, uh, that answer, I don't think I can really ask this next question from Katie, but I'll ask this one from, uh, Lady Bird in the chat. Uh, her question was, what is your favorite bodily function? Wow. Out of all the bodily functions to have speech. Speech. Okay. That's fair. I mean, like you said, having the greatest impact and, you know. Have, being heard, I guess. That's all. That's. I mean, I feel like that's all anyone ever wants, right? In life, just you know, interact. With Maybe people. understood, under understood, loved, cared about. Connections. You know, that's all. That's what it's all about. Connection. Baby. Possibly physical connection, but even then, like so many people, wash that up into wanting to have as many as possible. And, and as much as I totally holistically believe that you can create strong correct connections through any number of that, like you're also using people at the same time and you can't necessarily basis how they're going to feel about any number of things until the moment that they're gone. And so what do you do? Choose only soulmates? Like it's hard. It's really it's tough. Hard, man. Yeah, it is. It's just easier to be, I mean, I'm celibate for the simple reason that, that it, it is definitely easier to not make those mistakes and not make mistakes through sexuality by not having sex. Okay. I, that's news to me. I didn't, I, that's an interesting You're stance, not going to get any STDs. You're not going to end up accidentally impregnating someone. You're well, you know, they have birth control these hurting days. Hurting someone's feelings or accidentally raping anyone. Ooh, I, okay, great. yeah. Well, I don't know. That one's up there. That one's tough. I certainly hope not too many people end up accidentally raping people. Because <laughs> that, that doesn't sound like it's an accidental thing. Does it? No, 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 no. I'm not talking about accidental, but even put it into the instance, I'm trying to have sex, so sex is more commonly an idea. You get blackout drunk, all of a sudden somebody takes advantage of the fact you want to have sex just because you're drunk. Or vice versa. Uh, you're trying to have sex with someone else, you're misreading them, and and in any case, you press upon them to have sex. I almost had sex the first time I had met a girl and we ended up sleeping together later, but but uh, she obviously didn't want to and I kept pressing it. Like, I I'm not saying I'm devoid of being an idiot, uh, stereotypical We've all toxic there, male yeah. or any one of those things, but... Um, the fact that like she didn't want to and I kept pushing it definitely would have made it something else if it had happened later. Yeah. Like who knows that. what she would have said, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. or even about the situation that had happened beforehand before I met her brother and then slept with her in her room. Like I don't know, very complicated situation. So Katie claims that <laughs> Katie has a question and her question was, Do you really have as much anal sex as you claim? Because apparently that's something that when you claim. When did I claim that? I think that's, I mean, I'm going to have to ask Katie for these receipts, but apparently her impression is that you claim to have some amount of it. So I just said I'm celibate. I've been celibate for four years. Four that years. What it is. So was there like a moment that, you know? Yep. Yeah? Okay. There was a moment. I'm not talking about it. Okay. We don't have to talk about it. 
Um, so, big fan of Bang Energy Drink, huh? Pretty good. Is that your favorite? Uh, no, Rip It, sir. I've never heard of that. So Nova, Nova just asked, what's your favorite movie? If you could narrow it down to one. The Matrix. What was that? Sorry. The Matrix. Oh, The Matrix. Okay. It's a good one. Bang is not a sponsor, no. Uh, yeah, Katie says congrats. That's pretty crazy. Um, I don't really have... It kind of is hard to do, and weirdly enough, being celibate and the longer you go through celibacy... I think people actually find out or know some weird way and then want to sleep with you more. Like, they, oh, like, really? realize. So that. that's, like, a superpower. Like, like, oh, it's... this is a person that needs to have sex. Like, like this is something you want to do subtly in the back of your mind. It's maybe always they, a part yeah. of humanality. So Maybe like, they see it as a challenge, know. you know? They want to be yeah, exactly. Person. And then and then all of a sudden everybody starts opening doors and then, and then the harder you try, they kind of want to slam them shut because you're that guy, you know? So would you say that there's a lot of girls throwing themselves at you. Mm. I wouldn't say tons throwing themselves, but the Opening amount doors. that I get a flirty anything from somebody else, definitely. Where do you, where's, what's like the number one source of that sort of stuff? Like, is it just like through an, like an Instagram DM? Like, I don't know because. Be half of it, but uh, no, I definitely say like at school in general. Just in general in public? Okay. Uh, the amount that I think that somebody's trying to have some sort of physical connection along with whatever verbal connection we're immediately having in the moment, uh, it happens so often that, like, it's affronted me into being what I am. So it. I, yeah, I mean, I definitely commend you for that because it's, it would not be easy for most everybody, I would say. It's um, almost as hard to stick through a specific religion on your way through college. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I totally agree with you on that one. Um, man, religion is a whole nother, you know, can of worms that we could get into. Well, I mean, just to throw out an idea I've been throwing out to all of my friends recently, if you take religion as a stance or an idea, uh, you're starting to talk about faith, the soul, right? That's sure. that's where yeah. that kind of leads. It's um, definitely part of it, yeah. Even the God idea, but mm -hmm. some religions don't even believe in God, if you, you want to take Buddhism for an example. Sure. But, um, uh, if you're believing in the soul and eternity, faith that eternity exists even through reincarnation, we're starting to say that YOLO isn't a thing, brother. Like, you don't only live once and yeah. nobody that exists would ever or could ever adhere to that idea fully and entirely. Uh, I'm literally saying, like, if you believe you die and YOLO, you only live once, your soul doesn't exist you're soulless you go poof right like yeah. you stop to exist you have no soul you have no eternity you have nothing that lives forever so what there are no consequences to how you live now this is what religion bases itself in the idea that you will as a soul live forever and these consequences that you do as a human being last you. forever yeah so so uh, as a big idea i'm starting to say like people disemboweling the idea that religion is a thing or it'll outdo itself as an idea is stupid it's what brought us out of the dark ages okay so i guess what is your kind of religious personal stance i am a hindu buddhist christian oh wow that is what does that exactly i believe entail? i believe in hinduism all seven laws and all five uh uh pillars okay and uh out of the 33 no, 330,000 gods that they believe in, they allow you to believe in one. That one god that I believe in is Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus Christ walked this earth. He was, as he says, a son of God. How they took that when they killed him was possibly disemboweled because what he said in court was, that's what you call me. And then he died saying, forgive them for they do not know what they do. And in any case, I'm a Buddhist because Buddha says everything Jesus says next that's very interesting. I think that's that's one of the most interesting uh, answers actually I've ever had uh, to that question. So I just am very yep, interested. Full practicing. In, yeah, I'm very I don't, interested. I don't relate myself into any specific church because none of them fit that. Sure. Yeah. So how did you like? Was there like some specific influence or person that you know kind of directed going through you? Catholic high school? They teach okay. you about every religion and religion class. Yeah, so they I was do. Like, These yeah. religions sound cool, and you know what? They fit together. 
Interesting, yeah. I went to a Catholic middle school, but then to a public high school, so I didn't get too in-depth with religion. Um, Can be scary, but yeah. if you went to a Catholic middle school, you know people lash out like normal people just as much. Oh yeah, 100%. I, exactly. I would say that that sort of stuff is even worse in a, in a religious uh, As part. far as uh, how underhanded it is, definitely. Yeah, so... Man, I, I feel like we've covered a lot of ground. I don't know... If you have any questions for me, if you have any questions for anyone in the chat, um, or just anything you want to bring up, otherwise, that's really all I have. Are you into a coding language? Are you, uh, are you trying to learn coding? Yeah, so I don't know much, but I am You should learn HTML. Just start with web design, basic okay. web design. I'll teach you everything you need to understand about how code works, and then you can dive into another language. Okay, so um, I... Java I'm... would be my second one. It definitely incorporates itself into web plenty, so you might as well just learn it on the way. But what I'm telling you is I'm giving you advice to start learning coding because we're, we're working into a world that operates off of code. And anybody that doesn't understand code in about 10 years is going to be washed out because the computers are doing things they don't understand. They can't fix through pure code because we're getting that complex. Like, yeah. look at your computer these days. Yeah, I know. So I was going to say, I do know Python. I started out in high school, you know, with Visual Basic. Um, I, I can so read C++ and that sort of stuff. I probably don't computer. know that much, but... Um, yeah, I've, I've wanted to get into it, like web design and stuff because I definitely agree with you and that that is, you know, a very desired skill these days and it's almost visual yeah. as far as making something visual off the bat is more gratifying. That's the best thing about it. Yeah, I agree. So, um, Hesman's got a question. He said, have you or me ever had a supernatural experience? Do you believe in ghosts? Yes, I've OD'd. You have had one? On DMT, yep. OD okay. definitely fell over. Uh, my heart stopped. I woke up on the floor about two minutes later. Uh, it was very weird because I thought I went somewhere and had a whole conversation with someone that couldn't have happened. It was either my dad, my mom, some god figure, and then all of a sudden... I mean, lots of people say that they've had experiences on DMT, but this wasn't that. This was not... I, I was an avid user. Uh... I took the MT until it stopped making me blast off, and then I OD. Okay. So, uh, to be completely honest with all of the terminology that goes to it, like when my supernatural experience hits me and it constantly makes me think that there's a purgatory, I think we're still stuck in it. Right now. Yeah. Okay. Life, as life far as is. constantly repeating life over and over again as a soul stuck into being another human or even an animal on this planet or in this universe is constantly a thing to where we're moving up and down through universes like like uh um if you die and the soul's energy that keeps you alive the the heat that you give off is your soul and you die and you disperse equally throughout the entire universe however long it takes you for you to realign the particles in your brain to make the same consciousness and then all of a sudden be something else to reincarnate yourself to go through it all again to die to do it all again is is purgatory and the only way you can get beyond that is even jumping into heaven or jumping into hell and, uh, yeah, I mean, like, like, think about how statistically probable that would be for the vast majority of souls. They probably move one or two levels up or down in purgatory. Yeah, like we're, we're talking every existing universe that's ever so slightly better is being another heaven, and every universe that exists every so slightly worse being a hell. Who knows? Maybe we're in the perfect middle. I don't know. To me, with this current political climate, it feels a little bit like hell to me. So <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, I haven't really had too much. Uh, in, in the supernatural realm or um, anything like paranormal or anything like that, unfortunately. Um, you know, obviously there's been some things that have been difficult to explain to myself uh, that I may have seen or thought I had seen, but, you know, nothing too that stands out to me. So um, that's how I'd answer that. Um, but yeah, that's really all I so have. So you, you seriously never had something bizarre happen? Like, never attributed a black cat to something weird happening, or, or, I just, or karma? I don't you've never, know. You've never accidentally stubbed your toe and then been like, oh, that was while I was thinking of something that happened, so therefore it's okay. karmatic that I hit my so, toe. So, yeah, you kind of did bring something up. So I always have 
occurrences of that deja vu feeling where it feels like I do have a dream about some specific moment in time and then that moment happens, which is something I had that as a kid a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You described it perfectly. A lot of people don't even understand what deja vu perfectly is, but yeah. if you have that, then I don't know what supernatural necessarily subsects itself to, but imagine even that believing like like beyond that to the sixth sense. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that understanding that when people have a full conversation sitting in a room together and then sit there quietly for a minute, their brains basically don't go through the same evolutionary steps of words that mean the same things that they can then talk about again. Yeah. I there was a moment in my in my life um, in high school where I actually kept a dream journal for that specific purpose in order to actually document those moments because I'm like, I swear like I literally dreamt about this and it could be any amount of time in the past. Like even, yeah, exactly what Tom said. And, 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 and it always feels like you basically knew it beforehand. And then exactly. all of a sudden it has to happen for you to have that cognizance of I dreamt this. Yes. And it's so yeah, weird. Yeah. And, it's so cool. Yeah. It's really cool. And that's definitely a moment where I'm like, okay, this might be a simulation and you know, just, it just blows me away. And then, you know, back to life, I guess. So, um, that's really all I can think of in, in that realm, though. Um, I mean, I've definitely had those um, occurrences where something is probably just a coincidence, um, whether it's like, you know, someone draws a number out of a hat or, you know, calls out something and you know, you like knew what number it was going to be or, you know, that sort of thing. But that's not as crazy as the deja vu thing, in my opinion. But yeah. Um, yeah I, yeah I would definitely say the world works itself in ways that's kind of funny um yeah. i mean if we're talking about bigger and bigger ideas like the simple fact that the adherence to any one thought or thought process to keep yourself safe to what you adhere to just the disembowelment of something that you believe might disappear is a scary thought is something that's a stupid thing to believe that your microwave might be the reason you have emotions towards it because your microwave can literally drive your mind into feeling them so like uh, if we know anything about microwaves and the fact that they can heat up water and do sure. that, then uh, I might even say that uh, the day that we have technology in our bodies to, to counteract what we're doing is the day that we'll start to understand that the world is bigger than ourselves, that our thoughts were never private to start, that uh, who you are is constantly portrayed through what you do, that... that what you're going to be is something that only you can decide that every single moment is up to you and decision. If you brought yourself into a moment, it's because of the decisions you made up to it. If you're bringing yourself out of something, it's what you're doing to do it. Like, uh, if you, you find yourself in prison, um, the only reason you're still in prison is because you're working or you're not working to get yourself out of it. So like, do you believe uh, in like destiny? Even, even and that up sort of a of time stuff? basis like that, there are things that you can shorten your sentence with, you can reacquit it yourself with, you can argue sure. things in court. Yeah. But, um, I'm sorry, what's the question? My, I, I just asked, like, do you think, like, destiny and, like, that sort of thing is true then? Or? Destiny, fate, stuff like that. Uh, yeah. I'd say that there are ones. I'd say that, that there is an inevitability to an inaction. There is, there is a consequence to every single sure. reinstatement of something that happens. And so when you do that, you get self-reminded of it. And just because something exists is something that you don't like doesn't mean that it won't remind you of both instances. And that instance that you forget is probably the one that makes you most mad because you're just wanting to explain it without the words. So this is just a question I thought of. It's completely not super related, but... What do you think about like time travel? Do you think that's actually going to be something yes, that's possible? possible? Okay, so you. just because like you said, you know, cloning's coming, time travel you think is coming, and do you think you'll be able to go? My idea of how the universe exists, and it's not okay. the strongest one, but uh, basically imagine every single moment in time already existing, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine everything possible, all of it. Sure. All infinite numbers. Not on a timeline, from, just From existence. nine repeating to point nine repeating all numbers inwards and outwards you know what i'm saying so uh if you think everything is possible imagine all moments have already existed mm -hmm. between themselves and uh, uh next to themselves so Does that time, make sense? time almost doesn't exist it's just non-linear kind of, kind of hold on your consciousness is the thing 
that is constantly traveling through the for medical I'm sorry, I only have one hand. Uh bubbles of the universe. And they don't look what like do you mean spheres. Hand? They don't look like they're they're veils of the universe. You understand there's yeah. there's an edge that we think exists. And so that is your consciousness using your body as an antenna to bring your consciousness to your body in all of these universes, one after another. Every room you walk into, every conversation you have, every person you meet is you two people joining places in that universe to exist even in that point in time together. Yeah. Following those same two places in those bubbles until they separate. And you can get from one point to any other point by jumping. You just have to make a jump with enough electricity for that consciousness to move from the bubbles that it exists through, from doing something without having to make my hands open that door, to walk through it, yeah. to make my body close my eyes and wake up somewhere else in a time that doesn't exist up here. You know what I mean? You have to I have kinda, full expectation follow, yeah. that the understanding that what you're about to do is going to do that. Sure, yeah. Um, so you think that like everything is just a long chain of kind of cause and effect, right? Is, is that where I like this comment? You're just talking about sleeping, dude. I might completely agree that if your brain is an antenna for your consciousness, when you sleep and your consciousness leaves you, your body lives on its own waiting for your soul to reside. I might actually believe that. Okay. So I guess going back to the time travel thing, cause we didn't really get to that yet. How does the time travel work? Like, is it the way that the movies portray it, or like you uh, basically have to go faster than light? Okay, because like know how you mean. there's the whole like uh, not phenomenon but paradox where if time travel did exist, then we would have already you know it would have already happened, right? There's also a paradox that says that apparently atoms can't move faster than particles, which is light. Okay. So once we break that, you know, uh, basically. Once that point happens, the one known fact that will happen before time travel of jumping instances is that if you live in space, even these days, moving as fast as they do outside of the light, outside of, of, of Earth's sphere, if you, if you live on Mount Everest, you age slower and have more time revolving the Earth yeah, than true. anybody else at a lower level. Yeah. So, like, the one thing we know is once you enter space and travel faster than light, you will age slower, and by the time you return, everyone on Earth will have aged that much farther than you are, and you will have lived that much longer. See, now you're just sounding like Christopher Nolan a little... Uh... Possibly mentally slower. Yeah. So, um... There was something else that just left my mind, but uh, the one, one of the last questions I want to ask is, what do you think about, like, conspiracy theories? Are you conspiratorial, or do you just kind of look at those theories and they knew about 9-11 however 9-11 happened they basically let it did okay so you think that uh they area did 51 did they is definitely orchestrate... a place that they test space active material spacecraft okay uh yeah i mean airplanes that go into space that's what area 51 was originally made for it's what it's been made for ever since it's what it's still being used for the sr1 was made there the blackhawk you know a disemboweled bomber that was the one and only plane in our entire U.S. military at the time that could go into space. Um, you don't think uh, that they would have moved all that shit because everyone knows about Area No, it's still the best place for that, definitely. Okay. It's, right. it's, it's it's surrounded by 50 miles of nothing. That's and true. that 50 miles before the gate... It's a long way. It's like, as we've witnessed. Yeah, it's a long ways for even a robot the size of a coin to travel. You know what I mean? Like... You're telling me that nothing there is going to find out about something before it gets close enough to really find out what this stuff is? I doubt it. Yeah, and it's pro. I mean, it's in. It's un It's got to be underground, right? So. I don't oh know. yeah, I'm sure the vast majority. It's very much underground. So, what you're the saying? The number of people coming and going is surprisingly little. You're telling yeah. me that scientists or whoever lives there lives there, like yeah, lives there permanently. Okay. So in terms of like 9-11, what you're saying is they knew it was going to happen? Like how, like, was it planned or orchestrated or did they just find out about it? Like, you know. If people had honestly been dumb enough to keep something so big underground so long and only ever in text, never written down, never in a phone conversation, never in, 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 in 
uh, text over. So you're you know, saying phones our intelligence would have found out about this? Like, I'm saying we have people in those countries that probably would have heard it on the street in the marketplace. Yeah. Like the United States has strong enough connections that even if some other country knew its people were planning something that bad, they would have told them. Okay. But what I'm saying is you're calling out 9-11 to something that brought us into something that the president was literally, like Hutch says, already looking to do before it happened. So for me to buy into whatever happened, I can't believe that those didn't explode from like structural integrity that was meant to do so. Uh, uh, it collapsed so long afterwards, it didn't split in half, it didn't fall over. It literally shed itself from the inside out as if explosives had done it like a demo. I don't know if you've seen demolitions of buildings, but I, that's what it looks like. Yeah, I mean, I've I've watched some of these videos that completely debunk these theories. If it though. had twisted and broken from the basis, it would have all fallen as one big chunk. You know what I mean? None of this coheres correctly. Uh, the number of people that died isn't even close to the number of people that fill up the building. Uh, the the number of buildings around it that had just damage to them and weren't destroyed is another crazy statistic. It's almost like the best thing came out of the worst possible action ever. And, and like for some people to be horrified, Pearl Harbor, exactly. Like we didn't know about Pearl Harbor. No, we knew about Pearl Harbor. We just weren't, weren't prepared for it. And we had a parade that day. We were, we were not gonna stop for Pearl Harbor, apparently. Uh, I'm telling you, the United States military knows a lot and lets a lot happen because they don't have a good plan of action. And uh, anything that happens in the United States military falls upon the person that makes that decision. And the most common instantality of making a bad decision is made by the highest up person it can be, which then falls on the president. Sure. And, and, and for a number of presidents that have made stupid decisions, even going down to, to how perfectly Zero Dark Thirty went, uh, what three guards killed and one shot was fired at the one man we needed to kill and then we dumped his body in an ocean so that no other person could have a pilgrimage to him like come on yeah. uh when we do well we do real we do real good yeah but i'm saying like uh if i don't believe in conspiracy theories it's because everybody already knows the generalized instance of why something happens so the reason of how it happens goes to the wayside. Okay. And I'm not taking away the reason of how people feel or what happened at 9-11. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah. just to back up my one instance, I'm not taking away that horror that we all yeah. felt in fourth grade when we sat there and watched this fucking television. So where do you think the balance between, you know, the um, government's responsibility to, like, warn people versus you know like you're saying letting these things happen and i mean how do how you many even... other countries hate america for being us i mean almost every it seems like yeah how lot. many of them have terrorists by definition of the word sir all of them yeah. how many of those terrorists want to do harm to america and then somehow subside that idea once getting here that's a statistic i'd like to see uh well, we're coming up on an hour, <laughs> and I just want to time thank blue. You. It was a good conversation. Yeah, I just really want to thank you. It was really interesting. A lot of hot takes in there, and I think everyone really in chat, um, and including myself, enjoyed you know talking to you, getting to know you, and just hearing what you had to say. I it was nice to meet you all. Yeah. Definitely keep this in mind while we're around. It's ironic that we both wear glasses. I, I know. didn't realize from your picture, and it's like we're. No, I wear kind glasses of, uh, during the Even night. like Hutch, like off breeds of wherever our geniality came from. It's weird. Yeah. Everyone's brothers and sisters, isn't that right? So, um Very true. Although uh I have this weird idea that there might have been seven or even nine original aborigine races that started the earth as aliens. Well, that's I don't very know how interesting. Much information. I want to give you off of a rough <laughs> idea, but Okay, so I'm trying to figure out who I think I should get on this show uh, next time. I'm trying to, you know, uh, chat with anyone else um, from either Hutch's stream or anywhere else. Really. Check out APL's channel. Uh, a person that would probably love to have a combo that I'd know would be Ferb. Okay. Uh, um, APL's channel 
or APL Fisher's channel in general has a lot of people that I know okay. that if you find out who they are, they're small streamers already and entities that would love to have conversations even about the things we just talked about. Awesome. So yeah. there's um, a recommendation. Um, I definitely yeah. have a chat with JP at some point as well. Um, small few. So yeah. Anyway, thanks a lot. Uh, uh, everyone really enjoyed having you. I enjoyed having you. Um, and it was good talking to you. So uh yeah have a good uh have a good night and rest of your week you too have a good night adios right. i'll definitely see you, see you around uh, yeah, see you if around. you have a round two let me know okay i'll let you know see you in uh in chat so goodbye yeah. well <laughs> oh no where's my full cam there we are Woo. yeah that was a great first episode i gotta say that was really interesting, really enjoyable, and man, I, you know, I loved getting to know him and um, talking to him. I hope you guys thought that was entertaining. I definitely want to have s these sorts of conversations with other people um, in chat. So, like I said, if, you know, if anyone wants to have a conversation or has any recommendations or anything, I think, you know, people love to hear what people have to say. Uh, what, people think and what people have to say so um thanks for tuning in guys uh i'm gonna hop off here uh jedi next i think yeah we could do jedi next that's a good one we're gonna have to uh get a uh a little mock-up here nail gun dude what's up nail gun uh you just missed uh the uh, interview all right, he'll be around in the future. All right, thanks, thanks for, uh, thanks for talking to me, dude. It's almost mandatory to do Jedi. All right, we'll do Jedi next. Congrats, Isma. Thank you, thank you. Listen, I tried to nominate you. I don't know if you saw that. Why is there cash on your mouse pad? Listen, this is my Twitch income. This is my net earnings. I'd rather not mod Hutch's stream. Listen, you don't have to do anything. It's it's the best stream to be a, a moderator in because you don't have to do anything. Because we have a J15, and I think we need to clone J15. Let's be honest, nobody does any work in that in mod, as far as moderation goes. Wish Katie luck. All right, good luck, Katie. On my, my dream job has an opening. Oh boy. I believe in you, Katie. I believe in you. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely less needed than J15. Currently applying. Dude, nice. I had a job interview today at my current job for a new, a different job. Not gonna lie. <sighs> yeah, Katie, you're gonna do great. Listen, the next time uh, moderation uh, nomination comes out, comes up I'm gonna have to nominate no tech <clears throat> I will you watch me promotion no not promotion it wasn't for it's for a job at a different company but I don't think I'm gonna take it even if I get offered it it's a job that is a shift job um, from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Um, and it could be a shift an eight-hour shift in you know that time range and i just i don't think that's too appealing or attractive to me glad glad luke ski for mod hashtag got the hutch finally yeah yeah 9 a.m to 9 p.m i'm not saying it's a 12 hour shift i'm saying it's an eight hour shift either on the front end or on the tail end and i just i don't know if i could do that man the inconsistency is too much i i need a schedule i don't think it's worth throwing it away I don't know if I got Tampax uh, with a sub an hour, uh, hour ago when we started, but thanks Tampax uh, for that tier one sub. Appreciate you, dude. Inconsistency is work in the, yeah, definitely. Definitely terrible. Um, I think a schedule is the best thing that you can do as a human being, honestly, and that's kind of what everyone strives to, to have, right? I'm listening to the stream while I work out. Don't let me down. Listen, LBM, you missed it all. What are you doing? 
I need inconsistency to a certain point. I mean, there's a difference between consist like inconsistency and spontaneity, right? Listen, Jedi, save your talk for the show. LBM, watch the VOD, okay? Watch the VOD. I think you'll enjoy it. Watch, just watch the VOD. Um, interview LBM. Oh, LBM, we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do a show, okay? LBM will be on the docket as well. I think that would be a really interesting one too. Um, LBM third, yeah. I think LBM's got to be third. I'll, I'll I'll mock up a schedule and get it going. Jedi, you're gonna have to make a banner for the chatting with chatting with chatters uh, episode two, okay? I'm gonna put that on you. I can pay you three dollars. Jedi, LBM, and Katie. Yeah, Katie would be super interesting too. When I interview you, can I introduce you as Joker? Oh my god. <laughs> Dude, Zebra's a fucking comedian, I'm telling you. I would just rant about lost stuff? No. Listen, Katie. We would institute a policy that, you know, did not allow uh, law talk. Take a shot? I don't have any alcohol. I don't have any hard liquor. Man. Anyway, so we'll get Jedi on the schedule. We'll get LBM on the schedule. Flu shot. Okay. I'm getting a flu shot next week on uh, Monday. Shot of water. Okay. Hashtag stay hydrated, my friends. I am really thirsty. Uh, note to self, I need to drink water during the interviews next time. But yeah, uh, hopefully next week we can get Jedi on. I'd like to get Puppy on, that'd be interesting too. I'd like to get almost all of you on, honestly. I think everyone would be interesting to talk to. He says rather not. Where's the Say Hydrated Bot? Screw off, freaking Hydrated Bot. Yeah, whenever Katie says water, it does remind me of that. I downloaded that VOD and I have it stored in a vault. That VOD is very entertaining to watch. Anyway guys, I'm just gonna be here talking all night if I don't shut up, so uh, I'm gonna head out. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, we'll hopefully see you next week uh, with Jedi um, on Chatting with Chatters. So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for the subs. And uh, kisses.